Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to the Operation Brutal Swarm recap, and today I'm basically just going to go over what was revealed for this new season and what you should expect. So to start off, uh, for the PC players next week, you'll be able to play Operation Brutal Swarm on the test server. They did not give a date, they literally just said next week, so I'm just going to assume it's probably the 29th or the 30th, I'm assuming. Now as for the actual release date, Brutal Swarm comes out September 6th, so it's actually nice to see that we're back to releasing the seasons on the first Tuesday of the month again, unless it does get delayed like last time. So moving on from that, I think the most important thing besides the cool new operator and the gadget is the brand new Castle Elite. Seven years of waiting, seven years of frustration, and now, our beloved man will get his own Elite releasing tomorrow, August 22nd. And uh, here's the actual trailer for that. I won't even admit, that is just simply badass, but unfortunately, I am sure on our 6 credits, so I'll have to wait to get him, but it's really awesome to see that he is finally getting one, and the, the team even did a great job on it, like, he just looks simply badass, like I said. <laughs> Alright, so now for the actual stuff in this new season, Grim is the newest addition to Siege, and he is a part of the Nighthaven team, and first glance too, he even looks badass as well, like, just look at that. So, his loadout consists of the 552 Commando, the SG CQB, or should I just say the French shotgun, uh, the P229, and even has a breach charge and a claymore, and is 1 health, 3 speed. <laughs> and also, might I mention, his gadget is literally just bees. Well, maybe not just bees, but they're basically like mini bee bots, as they call them, and thankfully they don't sting you, but more likely they just swarm around you and reveal your position, so... Pretty interesting, I must say. Now you're gonna see in the little clip I'm showing here, but there are counters to this, such as Mute and Womai. Mute, for example, like if you go to the jammer, it'll clear the bees of you, so there's that. And Womai basically sucks up his gadget and it kind of, you know, displaces it somewhere else. His name is Grim, and he hails from Singapore. He's a three-speed attacker who can wield the 5.52 Commando Assault Rifle or the SG CQB Shotgun. He's got the P229 pistol as a secondary and breach charges or claymores as gadget options. But the thing that's got everybody talking is his Kawan Hive Launcher, an intel gathering, enemy revealing, unique ability fueled by bees. Here's how it works the Kawan Hive Launcher shoots projectiles that stick to surfaces. When a projectile lands, it deploys a canister onto the floor. The canister opens up and bees. The bees form a swarm in a set area. The swarm does not move. If you're caught in the swarm or run into it, the bees will be all over you. Now, defenders, you don't want Grimm's ping happy pals to get up in your beesness. Jaeger and Wamai are your first line of defense as their gadgets can stop Grimm's projectiles from landing and releasing bees. Aruni's gates will zap the projectiles as well, though Grimm and his teammates might benefit from using his launcher to clear her obstructions. Kaid and Bandit are also decent deterrents to Grimm's efforts, as electricity will destroy his projectiles. But perhaps the most versatile Grimm countering strategy is to bring Mute. A canister that lands near a Mute Jammer cannot deploy bees. A player who is in a Mute Jammer radius cannot be swarmed. And a swarmed player who enters the Mute Jammer's area of effect will lose their swarm immediately. Now moving on to the maps. Uh, the new map that was supposed to come with this season has been delayed, as usual. To what I assume is probably the middle part of the season, kind of like how Emerald Plains was released midway through Demon Vale. And to compensate with this, Siege is giving us the Stadium 2021 map in Ranked, which is very, very surprising. 
And even in the clip that I'm about to show, they even poke fun at the players by saying, don't ban it. And I hate to break it to you, most people are going to ban it. Originally, for season three, we planned to bring you the Singapore map. But we needed some more time to tweak and uh, finish our Polish path. So instead, we will be bringing you something else, the stadium map. So the stadium maps are usually only available during the Road to FI event. But it was kind of a, a missed opportunity to have, uh, the, to have them only available a couple of weeks while they are full-blown maps. So while internally we always had a lot of fun playing it, uh, we needed a, a little bit of uh, outside feedback to be sure that it was ready to be brought to the, uh, the rank pool. Uh, so we asked a couple of pros to workshop and talk with us, and they had a, lo a lot of positive feedback about the map. That's pretty much it. We did a couple of tweaks here and there. We brought up the lighting so it's uh, less dark, uh, distributed the spawns so they're equally uh, distributed. And finally, we added the game modes, uh, the team death match, and the PvE elements. We are very excited to bring you this map uh, as a uh, ranked map or even a casual. It will be available on all players. Next up is the player behavior, and these changes I actually quite like, surprisingly. So here in the screenshot, you can see that this person was being so bad that they abused text chat and injured many allies on their team. And the consequence of this is that the person is now muted to others by default, and reverse friendly fire is activated as well by default for a certain amount of time. And also, possibly a great change too, you'll actually be able to report others using the replay system, so you can actually find out if that person was actually cheating and report them, or if they just got lucky as hell and shot you through the wall. Last season, we introduced reputation penalties, by adding penalties toward the friendly fire. With the new season, we will be adding a new penalty for abusive tech chat. So the people that are abusing the tech chat by sending hateful and abusive content will be detected, they will be reported by users, and repeated offenders will be under this new penalty. When the sanction will be triggered, on the player, the penalty will occur on several matches. So the person that will be under this penalty will still be able to send text messages. However, only the people that choose to unmute him will be able to see those messages. It's really key that we give player choice to unmute somebody that is under this sanction. When the system will be released, there will be a grace period. During this grace period, only warnings will be triggered, no sanction. After this grace period, repeated offender will be under this penalty. The goal will be to remove and reduce the amount of hateful and abusive content that you are receiving through the tech chat. Match replay is a great addition to the game. It allows you to rewatch your match and improve your strategy. However, we heard you. Your voice is really important. So that's why with season three, we will be including reporting options. We totally understand that during a live match, you are not sometimes able to report a player. Sometimes the player disconnected. So there is many scenarios. By adding those options to the match replay, you will be able to take the time to review the whole gameplay and report this person. Reporting is really important and key for us. While receiving the reporting, we will be able to investigate and take actions. This will greatly help us to improve our system, but also to better act on those cheaters and distribute the right sanction at the right moment. Your voice is really important. It is key for us. So please continue and use those reporting tools. Now for balancing, I'm not going to speak too much on it because it's a lot and the video can explain better than me, especially on the recoil part. And actually speaking of recoil, uh, they are separating the PC and console versions of basically the balancing for guns and stuff. So I, I think that's a pretty nice change overall. So we're finally free from the PC world. <laughs> But speaking about the little changes here, before I show the clip, 
There is a change to Rook where his police will now allow you to withstand and also revive to 20 health. Next up, suppressors will actually have no damage debuff, so you can actually go sneaky mode without having less damage, which I think is pretty nice because I always wanted to run suppressor on some guns, but the damage loss has kind of, you know, put it off for me. But it's good to know now that it's not really going to lose any damage. Now this one is pretty interesting, an EMP grenade is being added to certain operators such as Sledge, Monty, Blackbeard, Dokovi, Lion, Gridlock, Nock, and Osa. One of the biggest changes we're making is separating the balancing between the PC world and the console world. Console will now be tuned separately than any other changes that we're doing on PC right now. And that's to make sure that we have player comfort in mind for all of the changes that we do want to make for console. We're making some changes to the recoil system. What we're looking at with vertical recoil is a stepping ladder of phases for these weapons. For ARs and SMGs, you'll see there's three phases, and at each phase, you'll get an increase in recoil. For LMGs, this is even stronger, especially for LMGs on high capacity magazine weapons. Here, with the horizontal recoil, you can see that the changes aren't as drastic. However, it goes by the same philosophy. The longer that you hold down the trigger, the more horizontal sway that you'll get with any AR, SMG, and LMG. The other thing we're looking at, too, is making sure that every piece of customization is meaningful, that you actually have real choice between them all. Silencers now will be available without the damage debuff making it that much more interesting to play with. With all of these new changes, we have a new ecosystem of weapons for players to play with. You can figure out what works for you, and it gives new freedom to how you want to play the game, and it also focuses on the tactical gameplay that we have in Siege. As we introduced in the GR7 season reveal, we were working on the EMP impact grenade. So that's alternative to Toucher, that it's the only one that can use the EMP grenade. So that's a little bit what we already do in the game with Maverick, Ivana, or Termite, and we added the Heartbreed secondary gadget. This new EMP impact grenade will have a range of 2 meters instead of 5 meters of the Toucher's one. Also, gadgets and electricity will be disabled during 9 seconds instead of 15. It will work as an impact, so it detonates on impact. Toucher, for sure, will continue being the main operator to disable electricity. The operators that will have the EMP impact as the third option are Sledge, Montaigne, Blackbird, Dokaebi, Lion, Gridlock, Nock, Osa, and the Recruit, and will be equipped with two gadget units. We know that you had a little preview of this feature during the last test server, so we are going to introduce it right now. If the operator falls into DBNO while wearing an armor plate from Rook, they will be able to use the Wistan ability. Once the Wistan animation is finished, the operator will revive with 20 health points. The objective is to give more value to the Rook's armor plate, which can help us a lot if we fall into DBNO during the round. The Dokaebi logic bomb was not affecting the operators on the support mode, so from now, the dead operators will be affected as the life ones, but the logic bomb cannot be interrupted. With this change, we will be giving more importance to Dokaebi's ability and will be more consistent. We're changing the map ban phase to contain five maps instead of three. That way, if both teams decide to ban one map, the final decision will be a random between the three remaining maps. As well as, if both teams decide to ban the same map, the final decision will be between the four remaining maps. In the same case, if both teams decide not to ban any map, the final decision will be a random between the five remaining maps. Now lastly, for the Battle Pass, uh, they are actually bringing back the 10% store discount that was active in the previous year passes, which in my opinion, even though it seems like maybe a useless type of addition, it actually gives you a reason to buy the Battle Pass now because you'll have that discount on like elites, team skins, regular bundles, stuff like that. And with this, they are actually allowing you to buy the Battle Pass for a friend, through Ubisoft Connect, which is pretty cool change, but do note that it will use the R6 credits from your account, just so you know. We're truly excited to bring back one of the perks that was in the year past prior. So we're bringing back the shop discount. So what this means is for the Battle Pass owners, you'll be able to have the 10% shop discount during the season where you have the Battle Pass. And for our year pass owners, you will have it up until the end of year seven. The 10% discount will apply on any items on the shop, whether it's on Arxis Credit or Renown. So this means Alpha Packs, Collection Packs, Elites, or Esports items, all of this will be at a 10% reduction. We know that Siege is a game that is best played with your friends. So we want you to be able to also experience the Battle Pass with one of your friends. 
So during season two, we soft launched the buy for a friend feature for the battle pass. We're more confident in the system now, so in season three, we're deploying it everywhere. So what this means is that for you as a player, you'll be able to purchase the battle pass for one of your friends. For, for the moment, buying the battle pass for one of your friends and gifting it is actually going to be only for the same platform as you. But looking in the future, once we'll be cross-platform and cross-progression, this is something that we'll be looking at. The only condition that you have for buying a battle pass is that you have to be friends with a person for more than 90 days for now. So the buying for a friend is a feature that we'll be looking into expanding to other type of categories in the future. So maybe we'll look into esports items, elites, uh, but for now, we'll gather your feedback on how it performs uh, around the battle pass. So hopefully you guys found this recap somewhat useful. Uh, I was actually going to do a live reaction like I did to Demon Vale, but I thought it was better to just do this type of video instead and also have some fun with it. Obviously, you could tell by my horrible humor in this video. But if you did enjoy and found this recap useful, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe too. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.